that's okay. Step, right? We're all right. <laughs> okay. All right, so once again, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Bray. Then we'll have questions for the student athletes. We'll dismiss them in 10 to 12 minutes, and then we'll do – they'll go to the breakout rooms, and we'll have questions for Coach Bray here. So, Coach? <clears throat> We're thrilled to be back in this position again a year later, you know, with a chance to – go to a Final Four, we know we play uh, a team that I think is playing the best in the country right now. Well, they seem to have put it all together. Uh, and we certainly saw it up close and personal in Washington, D.C. in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. But um, I love our group. I love our will to win. Um, you know, we have found ways to continually make things interesting, and we're excited about the challenge tomorrow. All right, this time we'll take questions for the student athletes. Once again, we have microphone holders. Uh, just give your name and your outlet before you ask your question. Do we have any questions for the student athletes? All right, we'll come up here in row two. Go. Yep. The hook. Uh, Carlos Colazzo, Daily Tar Heel. This is for anyone. Uh, what is it like for you guys to be playing UNC at this point after you've seen them in the regular season and then the ACC tournament? Why don't we start with Demetrius, and then we'll go with Zach on that one. Um, I think uh, it's really good. Um, we played we played this team before in my career here. We played them a bunch of times, so I'm um, seeing some of the same faces, and uh, they got a great team, so it's going to be a great challenge for us, and we're really looking forward to it. And Zach? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we're looking forward to playing them again. I'm in uh, kind of finishing business. Last time we weren't able to get the win versus them, so you know we're looking to have some unfinished business. Okay, and uh, just behind him in row three, uh, Adam. Yeah, hey, Adam Zagoria, SMY for Demetrius and Zach. Um, you know, last year Duke won this tournament with three one and duns. This year it's a lot of veteran guys. You guys, Bryce Johnson, Michael Gabinage, all these veteran guys on the ACC teams. What does that say about your teams in the ACC this year versus? Duke with the one and dones last year, and did you guys ever wish you were one and done? Would that have been your ideal goal coming into college? Start with Demetrius. Uh, I'm really ha uh, thankful to be in the position I am. Um, you know, junior now. We got some older guys, and so I've um, been with this group for a while, and um, we've just kind of grown together, and uh, we just try to get better every single year, try to get better every single game, every single practice, and so it's been it's been a joy to uh, just. Uh, continually just get better and have fun doing it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I agree with uh, Demetrius as well. It's been a blessing. Um, and, you know, honestly, being here uh, and having four years under my belt uh, has definitely helped me mature and grow as a man and as a basketball player, um, especially, you know, handling stuff both on and off the court. So um, I'm thankful for the position I'm in. Over here on the other side of the curtain here in first row, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. For Steve and Zach, a lot of people talked about the last time you played Carolina, obviously, in the ACC tournament and whether it's revenge. How do you kind of take that game and, and use it going forward or ignore it going forward? Start with Steve. Yeah, I think we can, you know, learn a lot of things from that game. Um, like Coach said, you know, they're playing at a really high level right now. But I think we are as well, so – you know, especially with one day to get ready for them, you know, we're so familiar with what they do and, and they know what we do. So uh, I think mainly for us, just going out there and, and focusing on what we do best and, and, you know, playing with nothing to lose and, you know, and, you know, that should be good enough for us. And Zach? Yeah, definitely just using that uh, as motivation, what happened last time, um, and just trying to focus in on getting this big win. Okay, uh, at the end of row two over here, Jonathan, we'll just wait for a microphone. This is to Steve and then to Demetrius. I'm sure there's almost next to nothing at this point that you guys don't know about this North Carolina team. But when they shoot from the perimeter the way that they did against Indiana and get that many points on the scoreboard, does it at all change how you guys get ready for them? Start with Steve. Um, yeah, that makes them you know even more difficult to guard. You know, everybody knows how how hard they are to defend in the post. You know, they got a lot of big bodies, but you know they can shoot the ball as well. So it's going to be a challenge for us to. You know, keep them off the glass and out of the paint, but also challenge contested jump shots. And, uh, you know, I think we're capable of doing that. And, and as long as we can contest shots and uh, keep them off the glass, you know, we should be in pretty good position. Demetrius? Yeah, as um, one of our assistant coaches says, um, you got to do both. So, you know, you got to guard the three point line, you got to guard them inside, you got to keep guys from going off the dribble. Um, you just got to play defense. And so um, it's really going to come down to effort, heart, um, hustle, getting on the floor, flying around for loose balls, and just really going for it. Okay, any more questions for the student athlete? Yep, here at the end of row two. 
This is for uh, Matt and VJ. Um, last night when Coach hurt himself, did you notice that? And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, what is your reaction to that, that he's going to play in pain there at the end uh, and, and get you through to the end? Start with VJ. Uh, no, we didn't really notice it until after the game, uh, right before, you know, we came in here for the media session. But uh, it just speaks to our team toughness, you know, just <laughs> him being our coach, uh, just fighting you're, through the You're toughness. starting. <laughs> 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 and Matt, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it at first. Um, I think everybody thought it happened when uh, we were all jumping on him after the game. But um, I know on the bench, with about 13 seconds left, I saw him limping a little bit. I don't know if he was tired or whatnot. But you know, it's just like VJ said. You know, we we have fun with each other. It shows uh, our toughness, and uh, we're just enjoying it right now. Okay. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, we'll dismiss them. They're going to head up to the breakout session. Once again, uh, room one, Steve Vistoria. Room two, Demetrius Jackson. Room three, VJ Beecham. Room four, Zach August. And room five, Matt Farrell. Again, you'll be going out the back, and then it's off to the right, and it's a little bit of a walk. So luckily, Coach does not have to go to the breakout sessions. <laughs> uh, we will take questions for Coach Bray. We'll start with Dana here in row one. That film from the uh, tournament game, do you watch it? Do you burn it? Is it an aberration? I've misplaced that. That has been misplaced. Yeah, those are, those are ones you burn. You don't go back to. Um, but, you know, yeah, certainly you, you have to learn from it, and we've talked about it a little bit here in practice. We just were not very good with the basketball. Um, a team that we were a team that has been really good with the ball throughout the year, um, but that game – uh, we were not, and and you give Carolina credit. I think they've stepped up their defense. The, it was hard to make a pass, the way they contested passing lanes, and we're going to have to be better uh, finding people. I'm hoping Matt Farrell in the lineup to start the game helps us because we have another ball handler on the floor. We didn't start that way in Washington D.C., and that's kind of helped in taking a little pressure off of Demetrius that we have another ball handler on the floor to start a game. We'll say uh, in row one here at the end, Ock. Uh, Jamal Connell, AP. Mike, what were you doing in 1978, and how often has Digger reminded you that he got him to the Final Four in yeah. 1978? Uh, my big brother, Digger, reminds me uh, – he'll remind me uh, weekly, you know, what happened there. Um, 78, uh, I was a freshman at Northwestern Louisiana. I just left Morgan Wooten, but certainly remember watching those Notre Dame teams. And Coach has become a good friend. He's, you know, he's still there. He's got more time on his hands now that he's not doing TV. So he's around practice. And the one thing I like about him is, you know, I mean, he, he is the one guy around there that sat in the same seat. So I can have some conversations with him, and uh, he can relate to some of the things you're going through. We'll stay on this side in row two uh, to Mike. Mike Jensen, Philadelphia Inquirer. Mike, uh, Roy Williams pointed out you had success at Notre Dame before you joined the ACC, but can, can you figure out if being in the ACC has been any, any factor at all in these postseason runs? Yeah, I think it's helped us. Um, you know, personally, I've been excited about coaching in the ACC. Now, I love the Big East, and we had a heck of an uh, identity in that league uh, consistently. But growing up in Rockville, Maryland, uh, watching left your Zell's teams. I grew up an ACC guy, certainly coached in the league as an assistant. So for me, it, it, it was really, I tell people this all the time, this is how crazy expansion was, is, or, or was. If you ended up coaching at Maryland, you'd be in the Big Ten now. I stayed at Notre Dame, I'm coaching in the ACC. And I, that's crazy, but it's awesome because, uh, you know, I certainly – like going back through the southeast it, it's definitely helped our recruiting um certainly when you get to play duke in north carolina regularly um you got to play them first to have a chance of beating them you got to have them on the schedule fortunately we've been pretty good against them lately and it's given us unbelievable credibility not only in the league but nationally and i think it's given us confidence then to do the stuff we've done the last two years all right, we'll go to the other side of the room. Uh, Shannon in row four. Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. You talked the other day about seeing a ranking where you guys were ranked 16th out of 16 teams here. and We're ranked ninth of the final eight. But I <laughs> okay, I, I, I thought I saw that. But we're still the toughest team left. 
we're the toughest team <laughs> and left in this thing. But I think we'll be picked ninth. So do you think, I mean, that sounds like that uh, <laughs> from this, that you all agree that Notre Dame's often overlooked as a basketball program. And w why do you think that is? And do you think you need to get to the Final Four to earn that national recognition? Well, we have a quarterback controversy going on right now in South Bend. So, you know, I mean, my gosh, people will maybe tune in a little bit tomorrow night. Um, you know, I think we've had a great basketball identity. We, we really have. Um, we always were consistent in the Big East, but, you know, we never made the deep run. We had one sweet 16. The last two years, I think, has given us great credibility. I think in the basketball world, um, I firmly believe this in the basketball community, I don't think there's a program more respected than our program. No program. How we've done it, how we've gotten guys better, how we've built it, our style of play, and I'm really proud of that. We'll move up one row to Adam. Uh, Adam Kilgore, The Washington Post. Um, what to, to, to follow up on uh, Dana's question, um, w what's the, the psychological attack you'll take with your team in regard to that ACC game against Carolina? Do you ignore it? Do you, do you address it? Do you remind them that they've drawn beat them three a, times? Yeah, drawn an analogy of, you know, last year Duke beat us by 30 in Cameron, and we turned around and beat them in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. I've kind of used that analogy a little bit. Um, and these guys have been – you know, they're they're really, I mean, you know, they're really tough and resilient. I think they'll they'll move on. And you know, as a coach, I just want to try and help them a little bit more, make some passes. That's on me to help get us in a little better position offensively. We'll stay in row three. We'll come to the other Adam in row three. Hey, Mike SMI Adam Zagoria, how are you? How you doing, Adam? Um, two of the four ACC teams used to be in the Big East. To follow on Mike's question. Last time, four teams from one league were in the Elite Eight was the Big East in 09. Did you and Syracuse bring something to this league that it didn't have before, and how would you compare this year to that 09 Big East run? Well, I thought at Media Day in Charlotte, <clears throat> and as when I was asked about that, I thought this had the feel of those years in the Big East, especially 09, when we were getting 8, 9, and one year we got 11. I really felt it had that. And not only, you know, Syracuse, but Pitt, Louisville, Syracuse, Notre Dame, I think has added great, you know, great depth and power to the league. You know, it, it's um, it, the great thing about I, I used to say this about the Big East and now say it. The good news is, you know, the good news is you're you're in the Big East or that you're in the ACC. The bad news is you're but you always have power games there resume games they're always there and you don't have to get them all get the right ones get that thing to about 10 and 8 let's get half the league in that's why you know it was uh, you know when I was in the Big East there's oh my god you're in the Big East well 4th of July when I'm at my beach house down the road here in Rehoboth I can say wait if I get to the top nine I'm in okay I, my sanity is pretty good then in the summer but the ACC my first two years we only got six bids now, you know, fortunately, one of the years we got them, I'm thinking, if we're only going to get six bids, I may be back at Delaware, you know. So I love that we have set a tone for depth like the Big East, Adam. All right, we'll stay in row three at the very end of the row here. Henry Bushnell from SB Nation. Um, Coach, you've had a remarkably efficient offense really ever since you got to Notre Dame and a consistent offense too, like consistently good. Yeah. How is your, in your view, how has your offense changed over the years, like how, how much different is it now than when you first got? To well, we've always hung our hat on assist to turnover and taking care of the ball. That's why our rash of turnovers a little bit lately has kind of bothered me. And um, But we've always been good there. We've recruited guys with a high basketball IQ. They're good with the ball. Our big guys are good with the ball. And so you can play with unpredictable movement. You can flow. You don't have to run a pattern. And I think guys get better in that situation as they grow. This team is different than all the other teams I've had is because when we play Colson and August together, we're more powerful up front than we've been. We've always usually had one big and a stretch four, and maybe we haven't been the most physical group in the paint at times. But Bonzi and Zach together, they had 20 offensive rebounds against North Carolina and South Bend, and we're going to need them to be really good tomorrow night. Is it more like a player-driven system, or is it more about the actual system? Well, I, no, I think it's player-driven. You know, you kind of you kind of tweak it to what you have, and 
Um, you know, we've always had guys that can make shots, so your spacing is going to be good. You know, we've always been able to stretch the floor. You can talk about spacing, but you have, you have guys out there that can't make a shot. No one guards them, and the lane's jammed up. So we've always had enough threats on the floor, so the floor is open and you have good spacing if you have a post guy, Heron Gody, Zach August, Bonzi, to go to work. Or you have what we've had, you know, Demetrius and then Jaron Grant, guys that can slice and slash, too. But you got to have some shooters so that floor is open and they respect them. All right, we'll go on the fourth row. We'll start at the end of the row and then next to him. Hey, Mike, Jeff Grab with WREL. Uh, this is not your father's ACC when you were an assistant at Duke. Uh, as Coach Floyd Williams just said, the top half of this league this year has been off the charts. What does it say about North Carolina? They've been able to navigate, win the regular season and the tournament. Yeah, I think it shows um, – the power that they have, and they're old. And, you know, it's funny. So many people talked about you were in this position last year and you're playing Kentucky. Kentucky was young. You know, Kentucky was young. I, I, always, I, was, I always felt good about that one. This one worries me more because they're men. They've been together a while and they played, and they really have played like veterans. Different guys have stepped up. I think the key has been their defense, you know. And, and I think it started shortly after the game in South Bend. Uh, I hear – their kids talk and I hear coach talk it's kind of been then where they got after it defensively and it sure has uh but if you can win both in this league this year my hat's off to you we'll say in row four Mike Vicaro New York Post Mike um you referenced coach Wooten earlier you were around him obviously as a player as a young coach what did that what, what has that done to shape who you are as a coach all these years later you know, he, he's just the ultimate educator and teacher, and I was so blessed to be play for him. I was at his camp when I was 10 years old. I was around him, then go back and coach with him right when I left GW. Um, you know, I still draw on the stuff I learned as a high school coach and a high school assistant and even a classroom history teacher there. You know, the, the relationships with players, getting to know them. Um, he, was a, he was such a confidence-giving guy. And that's a theme that I've really tried to, you know. And then he used to have, you know, it's kind of a corny saying, but it was a great saying. He used to say this when we worked for him at camp. Be the kind of coach you'd want your own son and daughter to play for. And you know what? I try and live by that all the time when I'm dealing with these guys. It's a, I was very, very lucky to be with him. We'll go to the last row at the end of the row. Go ahead. Uh, Jamal Murphy, CBS Play It. Coach, I wanted to get your perspective on playing a, this, you know, a team three times during the season and what particular advantage you think, you think it gives either way. Most people tend to think it gives the underdog an advantage. I sure I'm, – I'm riding that one hard too. I'm all over that. I'm all over that. A team mass tonight, I'll be praying for that. I agree. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, as Steve said, we're familiar with each other. Um, they like to get up and down. We can't get in a racetrack with them. We're going to have to be able to rebound the ball like we did in South Bend, not in Washington, D.C. We're going to have to complete some passes and be good with the ball in the half court. Um, you know, but I, there's, there's no secrets now. And, you know, now you're just trying to, you know, you, you'd love to see some guys. We need some guys to have all-time nights. Crazier stuff's happened, though, especially with our guys. We'll come up here to the front to Nicole. Nicole Arak, USA Today. Mike, um, do you, are you one of the people that measures relative conference strength based on NCAA tournament success? You know, I'm not – I don't know. I don't know if I've really had an opinion on that. I mean, uh, uh, I can't say that I have, have bragged about that or – but I guess I will this recruiting cycle, cycle now that you mention it. Um, I, I'm not – you know, I, I just remember the grind of the Big East – and this is the same grind with the depth of this league now. Um, and it's, you know, we're the sexiest league. Everybody talks about our league now and the matchups. And we had great energy in D.C. It's going to be interesting to see when we bring the show to Brooklyn. Um, but I don't know if I've really hung my hat on that, Nicole. We'll go to row three over here at the end. Jonathan? I'd like to see your players be as laid back as they were up here, and they have been this whole time on the eve of a big game like this. Is this, that something that you enjoy just as much? Oh, absolutely. And uh, hopefully they're getting it from the top. You know, I think uh, we've always gone for it and played fearlessly, and I don't want them looking over at the bench when they play. And, um, again, it's a nucleus of guys, this nucleus here. They, 
they played in a lot of NCAA tournaments now. They played in a lot of big games, and, and they've delivered under bright lights. You know, we, we've delivered on big nights a lot, this nucleus, and certainly there's none bigger than tomorrow night. We're going to come across the room on this side of the curtain, front row. I'm Greg Logan of Newsday. Uh, you're talking about the ACC being the sexiest league now. Uh, do you feel, a lot of people have spoken about how of all the expansions, this one seemed to be driven more by the need to build up the basketball again. Do you feel that like it's done that for those Big East schools who moved there, built up the basketball, uh, not so much the, the football for the full-time members? Yeah, I, I would think all four of us who've come over, except for the guy at Syracuse who probably, you know, he's, he's a big guy, Big East guy through and through, right, Doc? But, uh, you know, if you got him privately off the record, it's it's been good for all of us, it really has. Um, and again, I get back to playing, you know, the, the Blue Bloods, Duke and North Carolina, that you get shots at them. Um, it's great for recruiting. It's helped our Midwest recruiting. When I was in the Big East and I was recruiting kids in Indiana and Ohio, you know, oh, you're playing Georgetown, oh, you're playing, oh, whoa, whoa, you're playing Duke in North Carolina now? Well, maybe I'll come up the road from Indianapolis. Even though I didn't get Montrose, I tried to recruit him at Duke. He went to North, and he made a great decision. But but it's 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 been uh, those two things really. You know, having those two teams and those shots at those programs have really driven driven the league and has helped all of us. We'll come back to this side of the curtain in row three. Mike Jaden Daly, Daily Dose of Hoops. When Carolina won the national championship in '09, you had played them earlier in the season in Maui, and you noticed Tyler up close and personal yeah. with his leadership and his refuse to lose mentality. And you also coached his younger brother a couple of years later after that. Do you see similar qualities in Marcus? Yeah, I think Marcus has done it. Man, is he playing, has he hit his gear right now? You know, I've, I've always, he, he's just a class act. He's what college basketball is all about. Um, and you know, it was great when he wasn't playing well. He was never panicking. He was just playing and making sure his team won. And I thought he handled that with such grace. And it all comes back around full circle. Uh, but there are a lot of similarities there. Now, let's be honest. I could, the Hansbros are a different breed of cat, a totally different breed of cat. And I'd love to have Ben Hansbro back any day. Now, I was scared of him some days, um, but I love having that guy. And I know they'd love to have Tyler back at North Carolina. Marcus does it a little more diplomatically. We'll uh, come over here, front row, at the end of the row. Mike Brett Strelo, Fable Observer. Do you think you'll have to coach in the boot tomorrow? And have you ever had to coach with something yeah, kind of that's no, limiting I, you? Or? I never have. I mean, my, I told my doc, I said, I don't really want to do this. And he said, well, we'll talk tomorrow. And, you know, I'm fine. I'm, you know, once the game starts, I'm moving pretty good. And uh, I'll do whatever. But, uh, you know, maybe I just need a seatbelt on the bench so I don't get it. I got to remember, I'm not the 41-year-old guy who got the job in 2000. I, that's probably uh, – I need to sit down more. Do we have any more questions for Coach Bray? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach.